very common map pick here for MVP Black. Yep, the usual one that what they pick it every single time when they want to close out the series. Yep, and we'll see if Mighty can prevent just that. It used to be the Sylvanas pick that they had it before on 2016 usually, but now they're into Sergeant Hammer seems to be the way to go for Black now. Sergeant Hammer Li Ming. And if they let Reset have Li Ming again, <laughs> sparks like are gonna fly. I feel like the Zerto is almost a self ban. Sands on Zerto was not quite too perfect with those Void Persons or getting the Li Ming down in the back line. So I think that's a good pick for themselves and against MVP Black. Definitely not the impact they were looking for. So we'll see what first pick comes out here for Mighty. Yep. Gotta have a plan going into. Uh, yep, and Vala is out of the option. We will likely to see Artanis coming in, Artanis or Naziba coming in to pick uh, one of these teams. You know, you really have to have a plan going into first pick. Uh, and when I see a team pick first pick in the wait this long, I was a bit worried. They do deny reset sleeming, which is at this stage I feel obvious and an easy pick. Yeah, and one of the best choices you can make as you really have to take that leaming away from reset and this is the map you need leaming's poke to race for that immortal too. I wonder if we'll see black. Uh, it's a rare scenario to see them try this but to go to the uh, dive comp side of things. Black is the one that started Tracer. Are they going to keep that Tracer which have not been Really making good results on this map, especially. And taking that Malfurion, we saw the zoning coming out from the roots, from that choke point. We saw Swoy on perfect Malfurions. Uh, we'll see this exactly the same from Merry Day coming out on BOE. Hmm, I wonder what they're going to pick at this rotation. They might just grab Arthas. Because they don't really need any other type of damage or global with this. Ragnaros would be picked here often, and I like the Arthas lock in here. Ragnaros is the old way, and Arthas is the new way of drafting on second rotation here on this map, but Leeming is denied. Now, if I'm mighty, I want to grab Hammer in this rotation because, look, Murd and Sergeant Hammer, and you've, you're basically set uh, in terms of how to draft Battlefield of Eternity for the Poke Comp 101. You just lock them in, and then sit back and respond to whatever Black throws at you. Do they have any weaknesses? You still have a large support pool. Nasang, one of the largest support pl uh, pool players in this tournament. So that's where I'm at right now. Because yeah. that way you just set up a, a, a comp that can have defensive engagements against MVP Black's potential dive while you sit back and poke the Immortals. Yeah, to add on that, I want to see Joker's ETC coming out. Joker has been, seems like he's been the weak link of the team and he's been way too overextensive with more than especially today and to add on the attack speed with the trade of trade of etc and samuro for the first the time. first time of etc korea it is the well, funky king it is with artanis so it's probably going to be sans playing samuro and joker on the artanis could be reversed insta lucio ban here and help give the sustain samuro so a lot of damage, especially on the Immortal race. You can harass quite a bit. Do you want to relay it? Or do you want me to relay it? <laughs> I'll do it. Samuro was actually just on click, and they didn't, they didn't really want it to choose him. And then the time just went over, and they just it just became a pick. It's not a real it's a pick, random. guys. It's, a, it's, a, it's not it, a random it's pick. It's not a random pick, but it was a hover lock time expiration pick. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As it turns out, our two, two picks that were unintentional were Chromie and Samuro. Go figure. Because I was like, oh, you guys probably noticed I went a little bit silent after the Samuro pick going like, well, I mean, I guess uh, let's let's just wait and see because I, really I didn't really have anything to add or explain. But I now was, I was just trying to say about Artanis, but I didn't really have anything for Samuro, but it's not. The worst pick, I think, when we also had that. Yeah, they could have picked Gazzle by accident, yes. like, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Ragnaros ban comes in here, and uh, we knew with the Zeratul ban that Ragnaros was a high likelihood for Black. 
They've made the adjustment for Arthas first, as I was talking about before. They don't have any ranged damage. I feel like if you want to play it safe, you go into the Grey Main comp with this. They could even potentially Grey Main Tyrael. Leave the fifth pick for flexing. I wouldn't actually mind it at all. In terms of racing, it's going to be a tough one, though. Like, Greymane doesn't really dent Artanis in a straight-up fight if they actually clash against each other. But this is a weird game now because I think Black... I, mean, I don't think Black is told that I this is an accident. They, yeah, so they're probably like, what confused. are they doing? I'm a little bit confused about they this. They are very confused at the moment. Why is Samro coming out? Okay, there's the Greymane, but with Tassadar... Okay, this may actually just be all in Greymane, maybe with Sergeant Hammer on the back line. It could also be a Tyrael fifth pick. Yeah. Uh, you know, they could go all in Tempest style Greymane. Way too all in, I would say. I think they need one more constant DPS on the back line. I think that's a good idea for Black to actually sustain. Malfurion and Tastar should be enough for Greymane to stay alive. Even can go with Wizen and Duelist to actually build up more damage. But Mighty has that race potential with Artanis now. And even more damage with Samro. So let's see how they go with the ban. Funny because they have like, now with the Samro and the Artanis, they have a crazy dive comp. But they have a Lee Ming, so I guess they're going to try to bust in. Uh, and have the reset kills to finish off. The STE on the Lee Ming. Like, I have no idea how this is going to play out. We're just going to have to wait and see. ETC comes in. That's going to really, really, with Kaurizim as well, going to help them race. Like, okay. this is going to force Black to hard engage because they're just going to sit there, uh, channel the Rockstar Pass to make sure it's constantly active, essentially, and just try to win the race every time. As we see Sokka's face, thinking, what are they trying to do with that Samro? But I think this draft is actually a legit draft when you go for that race. And also ETC coming in from Joker, which I exactly wanted. I want to see him more on the protective side than to go in aggressively. But this comm is actually all in dive. Mighty can cut off one target with a burst. So just taking out Falstad can be the answer for Mighty right now. Falstad is interesting. Um, I think it's just for the gust when they try to engage or to just to dis disengage for their own team. This is a weird one, guys. Uh, I mean, I, I can see what you're saying, mm -hmm. and I, I do feel like the Falstad can help them win the race when they get a pick or two, for example, uh, if that works out. But I feel like they could have gone all in the gray main. Neither cop is an ideal composition for this map. The composition from Black is more of a reaction to Mighty's accidental locking in of Samuro. And we will see which team takes the lead here. Tough times for Mighty. They're down 0-2. Can they bring it back? Or is Black going to take this 3-0? Let's find out. In blue, MVP Black, Sake on Falstad, Reset on Greymane, Tist on Arthas, Kyocha on Tastar, and Nerdate on Malfurion. And in red, Mighty, Joker on ETC, Sans on Samro, Magi on Kerizim, Nasang on Leeming, SDE on Artanis. Well, of course it's Sans on the Samro. You're the monkey and all that. We have the Monkey King on the cloud. You're the monkey picks. That feels like. Oh boy, Pleb Horse here for Dasong, who by the way is once again playing Mage. So, definitely gonna have to talk to, talk about this one for uh, the future, you know, who's actually playing what. I would like to know official positions. Okay, here's a nice swap on the reset. He is playing Grey Main this time, so we'll be able to just get his way out. In Dwargan form. And uh, the level one fight definitely went Black's way. It's going to be Samuro in the solo lane. Up against Falstad. We see the Artanis rotation up though, so this might be a lane swap. Could be a gank attempt if he hits the swap. It will be a pick for sure. Mm, hits it, but not a full range. A small swap there. So looking at the team comp with both sides, Black has a lot of CCs to lock in the dive from Mighty. 
Mary Day has the roots. Kyocha can give shield. Pistol also has the blast. And reset, of course, with the damage. And False Head, later on with the gust, can disengage the entire team coming in. But I think Mighty has a good theme of a dive comp, with starting from the power slide or any other CC would be fine. But there's just a lot of ways for Black to defend against it. I don't. I think Mighty's gonna have a hard time trying to dive in. They will. Uh, but I think they're going to avoid fighting whatsoever, and they're going to try to force Black to turn in on them because they have the ETC, they have Artanis, the amateur opponent. They have Leeming's poke to finish off Immortals when they do start that race. Now let's watch out what happens right now. now as we see the slower rotation down here for Artanis, and they're actually just going to uh, poke as best as they can as Black is already set up here. SDE is on the Artanis. This is such a weird... Position swap yeah, for Mighty. Weird. Very weird, actually. Yeah. And Magi on that Kerosene doesn't seem too crisp, and Sans caught right there in the roots, but just barely, he barely. Dead. Oh, what? Okay. Oh, last cap kill to finish off. That was, uh, that was almost a full cl a mini clown fiesta right there. Um, so, the Immortal Race started off for Mighty, obviously, in their favor. It would be crazy if anything else were the case, but they've already lost, uh, you know, they lost Samuro there, so that's an issue. This gives Black some time to work with. This is exactly how Black wants to fight this, is just leave Greymane solo while they defend and slow down this push and try to get picks. Well, look at this damage coming in, just with Karazim and ETC with that trade buff. That was a lot of damage going in, just with Karazim. Imagine having all of them in with Artanis, Samro, and Leeming together. That will be a fast race, of course. Okay, MVP is going to attempt to dive in now and force this. As well as talking about, you know, they have this awkward comp they have to dive into now because they can't win the race straight up with the Rockstar passive and everything else you just described. Sans is taking a lot of damage here. He's not really going to be relevant in this fight anymore. And will Joker get away? Does not look like it. Cocktail should finish him off if he even goes on the other side there, which he does not. He gets killed before he even crosses the line. And Mighty, just 500 hit points ahead, can't finish this off. Looks like they're going to send SDE in to, to try for it. They can't really body block him out. Moggy comes over as well. It's going to be a big stun, actually, onto both members here. And this is actually going to be very close. Just barely one for Mighty, but it's going to cost them a team wipe. They oh, get man. They're going at the end, but they're going to lose two, three. And even more. Nearly but four. Stops here. Nearly four dead. This immortal will have no shields. Mm -hmm. They're down in hit points. And uh, Black has this wall set up with full ammo, by the way. And it's there's not even a single shot of ranged with no shields, as I mentioned. They had like two shields. And this is not even going to kill the wall. It's going to kill the gate only, and that is it. So a big win here for Black in terms of that exchange. They, they're going for a gank on to Falstead, but it is Sake on Falstead. Just swift away right there. Sombro's kit, when you look at him and, and look at how he plays, this doesn't feel like he's a hero suited for the meta, but beyond that, feels like a hero that's not really suited for this map in particular right now. There's not much he can do without uh, diving in fully. And it's really obvious which one is the real Samuro when he goes in to use his illusions. And that's his only way of survival because overall he's just not very tanky as a hero. So he just hasn't really been able to accomplish much in this game. It's really unfortunate Mighty actually had him highlighted there when he was the lock-in. Look at this. The illusions go down almost immediately. And... Push continues. Black is just going to soak the top lane. We've gone full cocktail with this, which has been working out really well, especially because of those illusions. I love the poking build coming out, both from Valset and Grimey. Gives them the power to actually poke before the fight. Look at that cocktail damage. <laughs> it's on to two illusions, so it looks higher than it really was there, but still doing quite a bit, and so easy to proc the cocktails when you have the illusions there. Look at that. Dismounted all three. I'm going to do it again in a second. Has that shield on him. And Lee Min actually going for orb build this time. The, yeah, I actually go didn't notice that until you all in, it. All in dive and poke coming out. Very unlike... 
pretty unlikely to see that talent coming out, but it is there sometimes. Well, Samaruka and Camp. So he's gonna take this uh, Shaman Camp solo. And actually, doesn't take too much damage in order to do that. Looks like we're gonna see potential rotation to gank Sake, but I don't think it's going to work as the Immortal does start here. Mighty not in position to start that race. Remember, their cop wins the race straight up if you just sit them separately, side by side. Five on the Immortal, five on the Immortal. They win it every time. Need to be in position to do that, though. They're going to get the pick on the reset. Does get caught here. And now a double stun going off. Huge orb damage coming out. Uriday is trying to get out of here. Does use the Immortal stun to help escape. You see SD look for the swap. Look at that Howling Blast. It's everybody. Yeah, Black has so much decisions to use defensively or offensively. Even without Greymane, they can still... He's going to be back soon, too. There's a great, great swap onto Mary Day, but the shields are just leaving, giving him the safety. Look at Sake's positioning here. He's taking a lot of damage, but here comes Reset. We're going to see some cocktails fly in just a minute. He actually goes into Worgen form first. Wants to get the kill onto Magi. Just super low. Magi's out of mana, though. Reset may actually disengage to drop some cocktails down. I think Reset is waiting for 10. That's exactly what he's waiting. He needs to get that 10 and... They need to get kills if they're going to have it. There it is! Okay, there's go for the throat. Gonna have the double, and look at the flight in for the gust. And this is going to be four dead. Perhaps five, yep. Off camera there. Gonna be the five dead. Well, Samuro. How about that Samuro hero? It's been doing too well for them. Reset just came in, you look for the 10 as you mentioned. And uh, Magi went super deep trying to get the kill on the test unsuccessfully no mana no real escape there so much cc you mentioned on black they even went force wall <laughs> at level 10 so i'm gonna have so many ways to isolate and blow heroes up leaming is not gonna have dominance so when she's in these team fights even if she gets the reset she doesn't get heals off of it so she can't really carry quote unquote she also doesn't have calamity and basically leaning with that build will be poke only. Trying to do as much poke as possible. Which puts a large burden on Samuro and Artanis to actually do the damage on the front lines because she can't do it all herself. I'd say that's an okay build against all the shields and heals coming in. Because we saw a lot of leamings having trouble getting the critical mass trade reset. Because of those shields, she just could not get the kills. So rather than just getting killed, getting resets, doing some damage from far, far away seems to be the way right now. Oh, look at that silence coming in, though. Big silence goes off, hits everybody. Uh, Reset, though, here. is kind of caught over here, unfortunately. Uh, not able to escape. That force wall is not going to help him, so it's a one for one. Tis is on the chase here. I actually regret it. He gets a good Howling Blast. They're looking for something over the wall here. Sake just at the back doing free damage. Looking for the reveal here onto Sands. There's the reveal. That's going to be a double. <laughs> this is happening. Magi trying to get the kill here onto Merry Day, but this, Ice Block is a thing. This is a fiesta. This is on. messy. I'm watching this. <laughs> Coach is like autoing the fountain. I'm like, ooh, that's not what you want either. Okay, well, oh. that was actually pretty sick. Nearly gets the kill on the Merry Day. Can't get that last auto. I, I don't feel like it's worth trying to fight this without Sake. He does consider coming back over. But it almost looks like they're having fun at this by this moment. I think everybody's having fun. Everybody's having fun with this. And with Samra pick. Samra's really strong in lane, solo lane, especially in the bigger maps would be better. Having that hard, hard damage solo laner. But not in this battleground. It's one of... One of the worst ones, I would say, actually. I didn't really even think about how strong Tassadar is as a counter to Samuro with his detection, which he's built into um, at 7 and 13 here. So that's that's another thing. That's another reason why this is going to be a good pick with the cocktail coming out here for reset. Uh, you know, you just don't really think about Samuro so that you are going to see a lot of pro, a lot in pro play. This is the real Sans, by the way. Down he goes. Revealed. Nasong is trying to do what he can, but he can't. 
Even with the resets there, which he did not get, he wouldn't have been healed. That was the most awkward disintegrate we've seen in HGC Korea. Joker does get over the gate here. But this game is, it was, I feel like since the draft, far, far away from the hands of Mighty. This is not a bad team. They are definitely not playing up to their normal standard mm -hmm. today. But Black is just going to clean this one up super fast. They're about to have that double talent tier advantage. Great swap onto reset, but so much shield and shields on for protection. Nasang doing some poking from the side, but here comes in Joker Kamash. dancing alone. Poor Joker. Sad Joker. Well, this is going to be the wipe that ends it all. The flight comes in to block Magi out. Force wall makes sure even after the seventh side he can't get out. <laughs> the B step on himself. Nasong. The gust to keep the minions away from the core. And that is going to be it. Two talent tiers up. 21 kills to two. Four forts to zero. And the Black with a dominant 3 0 performance. Joker came out. He wanted to be in the final shot here. Will SDE join him? Looks like he will. The whole gang's here to watch the core blow. MVP Black with another 3-0 in the bank. Mary Day pictured on screen here. Just another day at the job. Mary Day just so crisp. Hitting all that root right into the positions of Artanis.